Hey guys, and welcome to another video where today we're going to take a look at some further stats bomb revision and um, specifically the negative binomial distribution. So it's quite a small chapter, um, part of chapter 3, which is looking at the geometric distribution. And as a follow up from that, there isn't too many questions in the actual textbook, and truthfully, I'm not a massive fan of these questions. Um, there's not too many of them, so I've tried to pick out what I can, but there's not too much. So hopefully, this video is still of use, but if it turns out that you know, there's not a whole lot of writing in this video. This is something I will ref definitely redo in the future. So let's take a look at what we've picked out anyway. Um, so the first question here, we're given a random variable x, um, which has a negative binomial distribution with mean 6 and variance 3. We're asked to find, um, in part a, the value of p and then the value of r. And then um, in part b, we're asked to find the probability that x is equal to 4. Okay, so two different parts of this, but let's take it step by step. So, if I get the right colour pen, question 6 part A, so we do it over here. Well, we're told that the mean, mu, is 6, and um, the variance is 3. Okay. Well, the formulas that you need to know for this is that the mean, the expectation of x, is equal to r over p, Okay, and then the variance, so the variance of x is just simply r times 1 minus p all over p squared. Okay, now obviously we don't know the values of r and p, that's what we're asked to find. Now, given that we're told the values of the mean and the variance, what we should hopefully be able to do here is set up some simultaneous equations. Okay, so if we set that the mean is equal to 6, the variance is equal to 3, we've got two simultaneous equations then. Um, so if we do that, r over p, that's equal to 6, because that's the mean, right? So r over p is equal to 6, and then if we set this one up here, r times 1 minus p over p squared is equal to 3. So we've got our equations here. Now we just need to kind of solve from here to obtain a value for p and then a value for r or the other way around, whichever you work out first. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to times through here by p. What I'm going to get is 6p is equal to r. And I'm going to do the same here but by p squared. So what that's going to give me is r times 1 minus p is equal to 3p squared. Okay. What I can then do, or what I know, is that r is equal to 6p, because we've got an r in this equation. If I substitute r in, everything's going to be in terms of p then, okay? So, doing that now, I'm going to get 6p times 1 minus p is equal to 3p squared. So all we've got to do now here is just expand and solve. Um, so that's going to give me 6p minus 6p squared is equal to 3p squared. Now I can take this 6p squared across, so what I'm getting here is 9p squared, and then I've got a minus 6p, and this is equal to 0, okay? So at this point now, we just, we'd just attempt to factorise this, right? So I can pull out a 3p here, and then I'm going to get a 3p here, and then a, a minus 2 on the inside of the bracket. So that should hopefully be nice and easy, just factorising this. Now, this would give us two solutions, and clearly we're working out just a value, so it should just be one value. And the reason it's just one value is because, remember, this is a p here, a probability. And remember, p here, well, p squared and p here imply that we this this p value can't be zero, right? So we're, we're basically omitting um, this 3p equals zero here. Okay, so again, p can't be equal to zero. So therefore, 3p minus 2 is equal to 0. So 3p is equal to 2. So p is equal to 2 over 3. Okay. Um, so that's the value for p. And then obviously, once we've worked out p, we can now easily work out r. You don't matter which one you sub it into, but just to make life easy, just sub it into this one. So um, we know r over p. So r over p, but p is 2 thirds is going to be equal um, to 6, and then do 6 times 2 over 3. So 
just get four. Okay, so that's our R value there of four. So that's part A done, we've worked out the value of P, we've worked out the value of R. Now all we have to do is find a probability that X is equal to four. Okay, so let's just clear all this working. But we will need it um, to help with the question, so we'll clear this first. Okay, so part B, find the probability that X is equal to four. Well, again, this is just a formula we can use to work out this probability so I, I don't believe you can actually do this on a graphical calculator so it's something you're just going to have to know by hand um, but if someone does know whether you can do it by calculator then please let me know um, but I don't believe you can um, but the formula is not too tricky to use the formula is just simply um, I'm not sure where my pen's gone the formula is just simply x minus 1 choose r minus 1 times by the probability to the power of r times by 1 minus p to the probability of x minus r. Okay, so all we've got to do now is just sub in our x and our r value. So don't forget, our r is 4, our p is, um, what did we work out, it's 2 thirds. So, plugging that into this equation now, and don't forget your x is 4, right? That's what we're saying here, so 4 minus 1, so that's 3. Choose r minus 1, so r minus 1, so 4 minus 1 is 3 again. Now remember, if you're if you're doing 3 choose 3, that's just going to be 1. Okay, so, but you, you calculate, kind of evaluate, evaluate that, so that's not a problem anyway, but it will just be 1. Um, P is 2 thirds to the power of r, and in this question, r is 4, times by 1 minus p, so that's going to be a third, to the power of x minus r, so that's going to be 4 minus 4. Okay, which will be to the power of zero, which will then again be just one. So what we have to just get left with here is two over three to the power of four, right? That's just one, that's just one. So one times that, times by one again. So we're just doing this. And put this into your calculator now. Um, what you should get is 0 0.1975 or 0 0.198, depending on what you're rounding into. Um, but yeah, so that's just the probability x is equal to 4. Okay, so hopefully that's nice and clear. Um, let's take a look at the next one. So the next one is pretty similar. Same kind of idea again. Um, this is quite a common idea, what you get asked here. So question 7a. To state two conditions that are necessary for x to be modelled by a negative binomial distribution. So, these two conditions are pretty much, well, it comes up quite regularly. I won't say it comes up with every kind of question for this, but it's very common. Um, it's just a nice, too easy marks that they throw in. So the first comment that we're going to make is that the attempts, let's just quickly check the question. So the attempts to solve this puzzle. So the attempts by each student are independent, okay? So that's kind of important that they're independent of each other. Of each other. Okay. And then the other comment is the idea that the probability of success is constant. Okay, so that probability here, um, 0 0.7, it shouldn't be changing. It should always be 0 0.7. Okay, so the probability. of success is constant. Okay, so that's part A done. Now for part B, um, we just simply need to work out the, the mean and the standard deviation of x using the formulas that we just used in the last question. Okay, so remember the mean, e of x, that's equal to r over p and then the variance of x is equal to r times 1 minus p all over p squared. But you've just got to be careful for this because notice in our question we're asked to find the, the standard deviation of x. Okay, so remember, just quite basic, if you want the standard deviation but you've got the variance, just square root the variance. Okay, so we're going to have to square root that at the very end. 
Now, before we do this, let's actually write down the distribution. So it's x. So x is distributed. Um, some people write negative b. I just write nb. Um, I can write neg b, whichever you prefer. For this question, um, what's our distribution? So we've got before 5 have solved it, so r is 5, and my probability is just 0 0.7, so that's nice and easy. And so we've got r, we've got p, let's work this out now. So e of x, the mean, is equal to r, which is 5, divided by 0 0.7, okay? So that'd be, the, that'd be the same as 50, divided by 7, times the both top and bottom by 10. And this will be just over 7. So what does it give us? That gives us 7.143 for that. Okay. So that's the mean there. And then the variance. Oh sorry. The, well, yeah, let's do the variance. Obviously, we will square root at the end for the standard deviation. So the variance. That's going to be equal now to R, which is 0 0.7 times 1 minus P. Oh, sorry. I've got this the wrong way around. So my R is clearly not 0 0.7, it is 5. So that's 5 times 1 minus 0 0.7, so 0 0.3, divided by um, 0 0.7 squared. Okay, so if I just get rid of that so I don't confuse anyone. Put, plug all this onto your calculator, you don't actually have to do this by hand. Um, and what you'll get here is that this is 3.06. Okay, so that's the variance, but remember we want the, the standard deviation. So we just need to square root this now. So, so the, the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. So square root 3.06. What you should get is 1.750 for the standard deviation. Okay, so that's that question seven fully done there. Five minus for that. Um, like you can see, the mathematics behind this isn't you know, particularly challenging or anything. It's just making sure you're confident picking your R and your P values, for example, and then just remembering these two comments here. Okay. Then the last two questions are very, very similar. Um, we've used exercise 3C for both of these. And what we're basically doing is just working out probabilities again. So nothing to do with the mean or variance, just working out probabilities. So question two. Let's write our distribution down first. So it doesn't matter what we define as, but I'm going to say it's X. Should we do the negative binomial? Um, what is it? So it's been a fourth head on a seven spin. So that'll be n. Uh, sorry, my r is four and my p is nine point five five. So my probability then spins it on the seven spin. So that's got to be x is equal to seven. Okay. So now we just got to use the formula again x minus 1, choose r minus 1, times probability to the power of uh, r, times by 1 minus p to the x minus r. Okay, so if we plug all this in now, x is 7, r is 4, so that's going to be 6, choose 3, times by p, which is 0 0.55 to the power of r, which in this question is 4, then 1 minus p, so that's 0.45 to the power of x minus r. So if x is 7 and r is 4, that's 7 minus 4, which is 3. Okay. Plug all this on your calculator now. And what you should get is 0 0.167. Okay. So like you see, these questions are really quick once you've kind of got the formula down. You're, all, you're confident choosing your r and your p values. Um, and just make sure you get them the right way around with what the x should be as well. Okay, so 0 0.167 for that, nice and easy. Let's take a look at the very final question now. So again, very similar, it's just literally the follow-up question here. Um, so Chuck shooting a target with a bow and arrow. Um, the probability <coughs> that he hits any particular shot is 0 0.15. So that's going to be our p. It tells us that he hits the bullseye for the second time on his 10th shot. So that second time, that 2, that's going to be our r. So let's write this down. So again, x distributed negative binomial. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. Let's see if I can make it. So that's going to be 2, probably 0 0.15. 
So if we work this probability out now, this is the probability that x is equal to 10, okay? Because that's what we're looking for, on the 10th shot. So jumping straight into the formula now, remember it's x minus 1 over r minus 1, um, or x minus 1, choose r minus 1, so that's going to be um, 9 and 1. It's p now, so 0.15 to the power of r, which in this case is 2, times by 1 minus p, so 0.85, to the x minus r, which is 10 minus 2, giving us 8 there. Okay, and again, just plug this onto your calculator. Um, this is something that you, you know, to save you time, just plug it into your calculator, uh, especially the 9 choose 1. If you do this on your calculator, what you should get is 0 0.0552. Okay, so about 5.5% there for that question. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of like the end of this video. Um, I don't really have any more comments for this negative binomial distribution. Um, hopefully this has helped though. If there's any queries, any comments, um, any errors that I've made throughout this video, um, please do let me know in the, in the description, guys, or in the comments, I should say. Um, and yeah, cheers.